hope you're doing well today. Today I want to share with you some things that I've been working on and give you an update on the things that I was working on last time. One of the things that I was working on was a sweater for my daughter. I was using the Lion Brand Mandala Troll Yarn and I did get it completed. I gave it to her. Um, the neck hole is a little small, it's a little snug, so I might have to rework that. But other than that, it turned out really well, and I do have a model available to show it to you. But the daughter it was made for couldn't be present on video today, so I had a different daughter wear the sweater so that you can kind of see the construction of it. Okay, so this is the finished product, and you can see that I have made the neck hole a little, <laughs> a little small. So a little. <laughs> when she puts it on, she has to stretch it a little bit. So I might have to um, redo the stitching here. But I just connected it here and then down the side <laughs> seam. And ah! I, it looks like the armhole is really small. But I figured if she was wearing it with just the camisole, she didn't want it, you know, like way down here. So I made it tight, and it's okay. But you can see that the two, the two skeins were a little different. So on the front, the green comes oh. up this high, but on the back, <laughs> it only comes this high. But Probably she won't be wearing it out in public, um, and this is really one of the first actual garments I've made in knitting, so it's uh, it was kind of a trial and error thing, but I think that overall it turned out okay. The bottom is this uh, pinkish purple, and thankfully it turned out about the same all around. But the green part was different, and then, of course, the blue. The blue was actually more in line than the green. For some reason, they didn't run as much green on this, on the one that I used on the back. But overall, I'm pretty happy with it. One thing, one mistake that I realized I made because I was in a hurry is that I did this edging on the sleeve. Let me see. Right here on the sleeve, I worked this edging, and <laughs> when I got to the back panel, I didn't. I didn't work any, and I didn't realize it until I was really far into the project, and then I was like, oh well, I just won't worry about it. But anyways, thank you, baby. You're welcome. Have a nice time. Last time I was also working on some knitted squares, the uh, log cabin squares. So I finished those. I tried sewing this, the squares together with yarn, but I didn't like the way that it looked. It, I don't know, it just didn't turn out the way I was hoping. So I took all that apart and I decided to sew them together on the machine. I figured it was a better way for me to get them together in the way that I wanted and um, make it have a better look on the front. So this is what I got and like I said it's not big enough really to do anything with. I wish it was like full blanket size. It just wasn't, I didn't have enough yarn to make that happen so I just stitched them together and then I took the remaining gray yarn that I had and I just did a single crochet border around the edges and I'm gonna just hang it over my quilt rack that I have in my entryway it is a hanging quilt rack it's not um, not a floor quilt rack so uh, that's what I'm planning to do is to hang it up in there and I thought about making tabs but really this I think because this is wool yarn, and correct me if I'm wrong, but because it's kind of worsted weight wool yarn, it's rather heavy. 
And I feel like if I put the tabs on there, it's gonna... It won't hang well. It'll be scallopy or waffly. You know, it won't hang straight and crisp the way I want it to. The way a sewn quilt would do. So this, um, this particular blanket, I think I'm just gonna hang it over the rod and just let it be. I don't honestly remember all the things I was working on in the last video because it's been kind of a stressful time for me lately. I just finished school with my kids on May 31st and we got, we were taking a three week break because we were hoping that this year coming we could take off every Friday or nearly every Friday and still have a little vacation time built in because um, we have various activities and things going on. We have a co-op class this year that's going to take up one day and I don't know exactly how that's going to play out yet because the co-op class is so far from where we live but I really want them to be able to take it and um, I just feel like overall not just the course itself but the interaction with other kids and all that is really gonna be a good thing for them this year coming. And I don't know, it's just a lot. It's it's a lot to finish the school year and have to do the reporting and then you have to get all your materials for next year. But then I've had a um, hit a rather bumpy patch in my marriage and and just being honest, uh, it hasn't been easy, and I am working through all the emotions of everything that goes with that, and it has been really tough to take an honest look at things that I've never seen or noticed before or things that I had noticed and swept them under the rug or excused them as other things. Um, it's been super difficult and I am trying to figure out after all these years who I really am and what makes me happy and what it is that I want to do with myself and especially going forward because my kids are nearly grown they're nearly a uh, couple of them are nearly done with high school one's just beginning high school there's just a lot to figure out and I want something that I can do not just to earn money but that I can enjoy along the way and so I'm trying to figure these things out and make time for them but the first week of our vacation and I was really hoping for vacation to be a time when I could explore things that I wanted to do and it didn't turn out that way so the first week of vacation was spent basically helping out doing other projects projects that needed to be done but projects also that weren't they didn't have to be done right then, just, um, they just kind of came in and took priority over everything, so thankfully those are done. The second week is a little better. Um, my husband was supposed to be traveling for work and that didn't work out. So he was home every day and that made it a little harder just to be able to relax, but I did manage to squeeze some time in there just for me. And unfortunately, uh, it was uh, I had to take some time and go to the doctor and uh, take some time and take uh, another family member to the doctor. So I didn't get as much time in this week as I'd like, but I have today because the house is pretty quiet and he is gone for work. I have a couple of projects that I did start and I wasn't working on them last time and I'm not even sure they were in my head last time. 
although I've been thinking for quite a while that I wanted to make a cowl and I never have done it because I couldn't find a pattern that I loved and really wanted to do. So, um, I kind of put that on the back burner and I made this instead. This is just, it's just a triangular, what would you call it? I, it's, uh, I almost called it a shawl, but it's more like a poncho. And right now I only have it tied together right here and here, so this would be uh, the arm. And then have it tied together on both sides of the neck. And then, of course, at the end of the other arm. And I'll put it on and show you. Oh, goodness. Well, I just found a couple ends I forgot to sew in, but I'll take care of those later. So this is how it goes. And it's just because sometimes you get that little chill. But you don't want anything, like, real heavy. You just want something to knock the chill off. So I made this. And I think I need to bring it. <laughs> I did the opposite with this that I did with my daughter's sweater. I made the neck hole too wide, so I really need to bring those in a little bit. But that's no big deal because I can just untie them and retie where I want them. But what I like about this is that I did I did this a little differently. Um I did a triangular panel, this part here, and then I turned it on its side, and then I just stitched uh, double crochet. This whole thing is double crochet, and I just double crocheted several rows until it was as wide as I wanted it to be, and that was it. So it was really simple. So if you want to do it, and this is the, the other side of it, so you can see the colors are a little different. And I really didn't care because I wanted it to be different so that, you know, if I'm feeling the bright pink, I can put that on the front one day. If I'm not feeling so bright and cheery, I can put the blues and purples on the front. I thought it would be good like at the beach or something. Just on those nights when, like in the summer, it's hot, but then in the late evening you might want to sit outside and it's it's a little chilly but you, and you want something, but you don't want like a heavy blanket or a jacket. I did finally make a cowl and all I did was figure out about how wide I wanted it to be. And this one's cro this is crocheted also. I've been mostly crocheting and not knitting lately because it goes a little faster and the projects that I've had in my head are better suited, I guess, to crochet. So I made this cowl and I just figured out how wide I wanted it. And then I started stitching. So the stitch that I used is actually just half double crochet. I just made two half double crochets in every other stitch. And it turned out kind of cute. And then when I was done, I kind of sized up how much yarn I had left. When I got down to the amount that I thought I was going to need to finish, I decided that I wanted to turn it around and start crocheting the opposite side. So you can see right down the middle there's a line. This is my original chain. And the border that I did is just an half double crochet followed by a slip stitch followed by a half double crochet followed by a slip stitch and I did that all the way around on both on both edges so that it would finish it off and look nice because I didn't want to do just the the regular single crochet border I just didn't want to do that on this project so I'll show you what it looks like obviously you can wear it like this but I think it looks nice like this and I'm not used to a lot of stuff around my neck and plus I live in the south so you know I don't get great opportunities to wear stuff like this anyways um, I hope this winter will be cold enough to wear this this is Knitology by Knit Crate 
and it is the Knitology Glowing Worsted and the colorway is Flying Trapeze. It is 40% Superwash Merino, 30% Silk, and 30% Alpaca and it feels heavenly. It's a little heavy but the, the way it feels in your hands is worth it all. I haven't really done any more with the little quilt that I was making for the window seat cover. I just haven't felt like I had the time. Oh, I did finish the Bible cover though. I'll have to show it to you. really quickly to ask and that is your opinion on saving like little scraps of yarn like I'm talking about like this big or slightly bigger uh, some people save it and use it for stuffing and uh, some people just throw it away I've been trying to be a little more minimalist I know it's really hard for yarnies like us that we just like our yarn and we like our stuff and especially if we're multi-crafters it's a little difficult for us to say goodbye to any one craft because well you know I don't have to explain it to you what is your opinion on the scraps like are they worth it to keep them or are they just making junk are they just making stuff for me to have to deal with later or I do like to um, be able to reuse things but also I don't want to be burdened by stuff that I may never need and I may never get to and if it's weighing me down I'm probably gonna chuck it out but you can just give me your opinion below if you don't mind. For this segment I apologize but I'm using my But I have been reading the Bible, and also I just finished the story of Olive Oatman. I don't know if you've heard of her. She was taken captive by Native Americans, and there have been several books written about her life. The one that I chose to read was called The Blue Tattoo. I don't remember the name of the author, but I will insert it someplace. Basically, she was taking, her family was massacred. She and a sister of hers were taken captive by some Native Americans and then sold to another tribe of Native Americans. And uh, later on, a brother who did not die in the massacre came looking for her, and it was just the whole story of all, how all that came about. 
uh, because of social pressures and things, uh, there were things that were maybe skipped over and not included, and um, things that were embellished in other ways because there was a lot of hatred towards the Native Americans because of the Manifest Destiny, etc. So anyhow, it was an interesting read, but I don't think it was something, it wasn't a book that I would go looking for again to read, probably. I just uh, didn't feel the flow of the story was that great. It was kind of like uh, the author would talk about particular things and then she'd jump into something else and then uh, there was this whole aside about this minister that sort of took advantage of Olive and all just all these things. And I understand that when you go back and you're trying to make sense out of something that maybe doesn't have a lot of facts attached to it, it's much harder to uh, accomplish what you're setting out to do. So nothing against the author. Uh, I felt like she included a ton of good information. It was just maybe the structure of the writing wasn't quite what I was used to. And I don't know, I just wouldn't probably read it again. But as far as reading it at all, uh, I think it was worth the read. Uh, I did, let's see. What else did I read? I thought I had read something else maybe, but I guess that was it. I guess that's all I've been working on. I've been doing a lot of research on a particular topic, but not necessarily in books. And I just wanted to, not and. I can't explain why people do the things they do. Uh, I forgot my intro. <laughs>